Peritoneum. It is a closed sac made up of serous membrane which lines the abdominal cavity. The peritoneum is also invaginated by a number of viscera, hence subdivided into two layers. An outer parietal layer which lines the inner surface of the abdominal and pelvic cavity and an inner visceral layer which lines the outer surface of the viscera. This visceral peritoneum forms double layered folds which enclose and suspend the various abdominal viscera. These are known as peritoneal folds. These mainly provide motility to the viscera and also provide a path pathway for the passage of nerves and vessels. Such organs or abdominal viscera which are suspended by folds of peritoneum and covered by peritoneum on all the sides are called intraperitoneal or mobile viscera. While the organs which rest directly on the posterior abdominal wall and are covered by peritoneum only on one side thus making them fixed are known as retroperitoneal or fixed viscera. The peritoneal folds are mainly present in relation to the mobile organs. Starting with the stomach, the peritoneal folds related to the stomach are the greater and lesser omentum which are attached to the greater and lesser curvatures of the stomach. In case of small intestine, duodenum is fixed whereas the jejunum and ileum are suspended by a fan-shaped fold of peritoneum called the mesentery. In case of the large intestine, the two mobile parts are the transverse colon which is suspended with the help of a transverse mesocolon and the sigmoid colon which is suspended by, with the help of the peritoneal fold called the sigmoid mesocolon. The appendix is also suspended with the help of a triangular small peritoneal fold called the mesoappendix. Ligaments are also peritoneal folds which are present in relation to mainly the liver and the spleen. Greater omentum. Omentum in Latin means like an apron. The greater omentum is the largest peritoneal fold which hangs from the greater curvature of the stomach just like an apron, hence the name. It covers the loops of the intestine which lie underneath it and it is made up of four borders. The upper border is attached to the greater curvature of the stomach. The other three borders are free, that is the right, left and lower free borders. The tracing of the greater omentum is important. It is made up of four layers. The anterior layer also called the fourth, first layer is continuous with the peritoneum covering the anterior surface of the stomach. The posterior or the second layer is continuous with the peritoneum over the posterior surface of the stomach. The first and second layers are attached to the greater curvature of the stomach and the proximal 2.5 cm of the duodenum. From here the two layers extend downwards for a variable distance and then fold back upon themselves such that the first layer becomes the fourth layer and the second layer becomes the third layer. The space between the second and third layer it extends for approximately 2.5 cm below the greater curvature and this forms the recess of the space called the lesser sac. The greater omentum develops from the dorsal mesogastrium. During fetal life, the third layer of greater omentum passes upwards covering the anterior surface of the pancreas, whereas the fourth layer of greater omentum covers the inferior surface of pancreas and it is separable from the upper surface of the transverse mesocolon by a small space present between them. However, at puberty, the fourth layer of greater omentum and the upper layer of transverse mesocolon, they fuse with each other and disappear by a process known as zygosis. As a result, the third and fourth layer of greater omentum are continuous now 
with the upper and lower layer of the transverse mesocolon. The contents of greater omentum are fat, macrophages which form milky spots and right and left gastroepiploic vessels which form a gastric arcade in the upper part and the epiploic arcade in the lower part of the greater omentum. The main functions of greater omentum are it is a storehouse of fat, it protects against infections with the help of the macrophages present and it also prevents the spread of infection. This is an important function as the greater omentum has a tendency to reach the site of infection in the peritoneal cavity and plug it. Hence it is also called the policeman of abdomen. It is also used nowadays because of the vascularity to prepare grafts during surgery. The lesser omentum is a double layered fold of peritoneum which extends between the liver and the lesser curvature of stomach. Its attachment superiorly is to the inferior surface of the liver in the form of an inverted L shape. This L shape has two limbs, a horizontal limb and a vertical limb. The horizontal limb is attached to the margins of the porta hepatis, whereas the vertical limb is attached to the fissure of the ligamentum venosum. Inferiorly, the lesser omentum is attached along the lesser curvature of the stomach and also extends to the proximal 2 cm of the duodenum. Hence, it can be further subdivided into two parts. The part extending between the liver and the stomach is called the gastrohepatogastric ligament, whereas a small part which extends between the liver and the duodenum is called the hepatoduodenal ligament. The tracings of the lesser omentum. It consists of two layers, an anterior layer and a posterior layer. The anterior layer, when traced superiorly, is continuous with the left triangular ligament of the liver. The posterior layer of the lesser omentum, when traced superiorly, is continuous with the inferior layer of the coronary ligament of the liver. Inferiorly, when we trace the anterior and posterior layers of lesser omentum, they cover the corresponding surfaces anterior and posterior surfaces of the stomach. And further inferiorly, these anterior and posterior layers are continuous with the first and second layer of greater omentum. When traced to the sides, on the right side, the anterior and posterior layers of lesser omentum become continuous with each other along the right free margin. This also forms the anterior boundary of a very important foramen called the epiploic foramen. On the left side, the two layers cover the corresponding surface of the stomach and are further continuous with the gastrophrenic ligament which connects the fundus of the stomach to the inferior surface of the diaphragm. The contents of the lesser omentum are along the lesser curvature of the stomach we have the anastomosis between the right and left gastric vessels, the accompanying lymph nodes and the gastric nerves. Along the right free margin of the lesser omentum lie the important structures that is the portal vein, the bile duct and the hepatic artery which are accompanied by the hepatic lymph nodes and the nerve plexus. The peritoneal cavity is a potential space which is present between the two layers of peritoneum that is the parietal and visceral peritoneum. This cavity can be further subdivided into the large main part which is called the greater sac and a smaller recess which is called the lesser sac. The greater sac is shown in the red color and the lesser sac is in shown in blue color. The lesser sac lies just behind the liver, the stomach and the lesser omentum. 
The two sacs communicate with each other through a small foramen which is called the epiploic foramen or the foramen of Winslow. This epiploic foramen lies just behind the right free margin of the lesser omentum. This is the only communication between the greater and the lesser sac. The lesser sac is defined as a small diverticulum of peritoneal cavity which lies behind the liver, stomach and lesser omentum. It acts as a bursa to allow the expansion of the stomach hence also called the omental bursa. The lesser sac is shaped like a hot water bottle. It is closed on all the sides except the right upper border where lies the epiploic foramen through which it communicates with the greater sac. The boundaries of the lesser sac comprise the two walls, the anterior wall and the posterior wall and four borders, upper, lower, right and left borders. The sagittal section through the lesser sac showing the vertical disposition of the fascia shows us the anterior and posterior walls of the lesser sac. Similarly, a transverse section through the, through the peritoneal cavity showing the horizontal disposition of the fascia shows us the structures forming the anterior and posterior wall of the lesser sac along with that the structures forming the anterior and posterior boundaries of the epiploic foramen. These are important diagrams to be practiced by the students. The anterior wall of the lesser sac is formed by the following structures from above downwards. The caudate lobe of liver, the lesser omentum, stomach and below it lies the greater omentum. The posterior wall is formed by the following structures from above downwards. The diaphragm, Below it lie the splenic and celiac vessels, the left kidney and suprarenal gland. Below it lies the pancreas, the transverse mesocolon and the transverse colon and the greater omentum. This is a section through the lesser sac after removing the anterior wall showing the four borders of the lesser sac. Starting from the groove for inferior vena cava, this is the upper border, this is the left border this is the lower border and this is the right border. The upper border is the formed by the reflection of peritoneum from diaphragm to caudate lobe of liver extending from the groove for inferior vena cava, fissure for ligamentum venosum up to the esophagus. The lower border is formed by the fusion of the second and third layer of greater omentum. The right border extends from the reflection of peritoneum along inferior vena cava. Below it lies the opening of the epiploic foramen. Below it is the reflection of peritoneum along the gastroduodenal artery and the right margin of greater omentum. The left border is formed by the gastrosplenic and lenorenal ligaments related to the spleen and the left margin of greater omentum. The lesser sac contains two sickle shaped peritoneal folds. These folds are the right gastropancreatic fold and the left gastropancreatic fold. The right gastropancreatic fold is directed downwards, forwards and to the right and is formed by the hepatic artery. The left gastropancreatic fold is directed upwards, forwards and to the left it is formed by the left gastric artery. These two folds subdivide the interior of the lesser sac into recesses. The superior recess also called the vestibule of the lesser sac. It lies behind the liver and the lesser omentum. The part of the superior recess which lies behind the lesser omentum is sometimes given the name vestibule of lesser sac. The inferior recess, also known as omental bursa proper, it lies behind the stomach and between the second and third layer of greater omentum. The splenic recess, it lies between the gastrosplenic and lenorenal ligaments of the spleen. It extends towards the hilum of the spleen. 
the epiploic foramen or the foramen of Winslow. It is a vertical slit like opening through which the lesser sac communicates with the greater sac. It is also known as the aditus to the lesser sac. It lies just behind the right free border of the lesser omentum. In the picture, the finger can be seen inserted into the epiploic foramen. In this picture, the finger through the epiploic foramen and the thumb between them, the structures present in the right free margin of the lesser omentum can be seen. These also form the anterior boundary of the epiploic foramen. These are the bile duct, the portal vein and the hepatic artery. The boundaries of epiploic foramen are important. The anterior boundary is formed by the right free margin of lesser omentum and its contents that is the bile duct, the portal vein and the hepatic artery. Posteriorly lies the 12th thoracic vertebra, inferior vena cava and the right suprarenal gland. Superiorly, it is bounded by the caudate lobe of liver and inferior to it lies the first part of duodenum along with the horizontal part of the hepatic artery. The clinical significance of lesser sac and epiploic foramen. There can be collection of fluid in the lesser sac. This can be caused due to acute pancreatitis or a pancreatic injury leading to pseudocyst of the pancreas or a perforation in the posterior wall of the stomach due to an ulcer. These lead to collection of inflammatory fluid in the lesser sac which may pass through the epiploic foramen to reach the hepatorenal pouch or the Morrison's pouch. It can also lead to adhesions in the epiploic foramen, thus closing the epiploic foramen and the lesser sac may further become distended with fluid. Internal hernias. In this condition, coils of intestine may herniate into the lesser sac through epiploic foramen. As the epiploic foramen is a small opening, these internal hernias predisposed to strangulation that is cutting off of the blood supply to the herniated loops of intestine. This is a surgical emergency and has to be immediately treated. The surgical approach to the lesser sac is always through the lesser omentum, never through the foramen of Winslow because of the important structures which form the anterior and posterior relations of the epiploic foramen. Hence, in order to reduce the hernia or drain the fluid present in the lesser sac, the lesser sac is always approached through the lesser omentum. Thank you and a happy learning.